There is a warrant out for your son Leon's arrest for fraud. The police officer said so and thrusted the warrant toward me. What? Arrest? My mind went blank. Isn't there some kind of mistake? I can't believe my child would do such a thing. Ma'am, I understand you don't want to believe it, but it's the truth. That's... I felt a sense of despair wash over me. I'm Beth, an illustrator in my early forties. I'm married to Jack, who is three years older than me and works as a company employee. We met through work, and we're already in our 18th year of marriage. I've been working as a freelancer for many years, but recently, things haven't been going well. The number of job offers have decreased, and even when I reach out for new opportunities, it doesn't seem to lead to any work. It's possible that part of the challenge is also the increasing age gap between me and the editors I work with, making it harder to approach them for work. Despite my efforts to stay engaged and promote my work by sharing daily comics depicting family life on social media, most of my posts aren't getting much attention. I've set my work hours until 6 p.m., and now it's already time. No job offer again today. What should I do? As I pondered over this, the intercom in my apartment rang. When I quickly answered the intercom, I saw what appeared to be a police officer and someone dressed in a suit on the screen. This is the police. It was my first time having the police come to my house, so I was surprised. Um, may I help you? I'll explain the details, can you please cooperate? Despite my agitation, I unlocked the auto lock of the apartment. Wondering what could be happening. I opened the door and waited. Two police officers approached me. Then one of the officers showed me the arrest warrant. There is a warrant out for your son Leon's arrest on suspicion of fraud. I listened to what the police had to say, and even though they assured me the validity of the arrest, I pleaded desperately with them. Leon isn't the kind of person who could commit fraud. Please. Calm down, ma'am. The other man in a suit tried to reassure me as I became increasingly distraught. I asked, bewildered, what kind of fraud did Leon commit? It's a, it's me scam. It's me scam? It was a common type of fraud that I had heard about before, but I never imagined that my own family could be involved. My Leon did something like that? Yes. He would impersonate a son or a grandson over the phone and deceive elderly people into giving him money. Money? How much are we talking about? That's approximately $500,000, as far as we know. $500,000? I was stunned to hear that amount. The realization of the situation made my stomach ache. Then I said, clutching my stomach. Excuse me, I have a bit of a stomach ache. May I go take some antacid? Of course, it's not anything strange. Also, I'll talk to Leon about this. It wouldn't be good if evidence were destroyed, so I'll have to accompany you inside. The police officer attempted to enter the house, but I refused. Please wait. I'll be back in a minute, I promise. I half forcibly closed the door. My heart was racing, and I was in a panic. Ma'am, please don't close the door. The officer continued to knock on the door loudly. Anyway, I need to calm down. After drinking a glass of water, the pain in my stomach eased slightly. I tried talking to Leon, but he locked himself in his room and wouldn't come out. Then, I opened the front door again. As expected, the police officer was angry. Finally, you came out. 
You're not trying to dispose of any drugs, are you? We had another police officer check the balcony, so even if you try to escape, it's futile. I haven't done anything like that. But if he really managed to get $500,000, does that mean my son deceived a lot of people? Yes, it seems he was quite skilled in his crimes, and the victims easily believed what Leon said. Does that mean no one ever doubted what Leon said? Yes, Leon is a pro among pros when it comes to fraud. I was speechless. For instance, if a victim mentioned that his voice sounded different, he would make excuses like having a cold or having sore throat, to prevent them from suspecting anything unusual about the change in his voice. But, it's me scams are widely known nowadays, aren't they? Can they really work that well? Yes, but recently, scammers don't use, it's me, it's me anymore. They do their research on the targets beforehand and might use the actual names of the target's sons, for example. But haven't you heard the news that bank employees or customers noticed the scam and helped catch the perpetrators? That's right. Banks are cautious with elderly people withdrawing large sums of money, but scammers have been adapting to these measures. What kind of measures are they taking? Leon instructed the victims to provide reasons for withdrawal that wouldn't raise suspicion of its me scams if they were asked. Such cunning tricks? Yes. As compensation for the damages, we would like you to pay that amount. Are you serious? You mean... $500,000? I asked the police officer in a panic. And... What exactly do you mean by compensation for damages? It's the compensation for the victims. If paid, it could improve the judge's impression during the trial. So, you mean Leon's sentence might be lighter? Yes. I see. I pondered deeply on the spot. But I can't pay such an amount. Besides, you said it's already $500,000 that you're aware of, right? That's correct. There's still a high possibility of additional offenses. I really don't know what to do. It's okay if it's not the full amount. Showing sincerity is what matters. How much do you think you could pay? Well, I might be able to spare a bit from my savings. If you sell this apartment, you could fetch a considerable amount. Oh, I see, that's another option. Leon is still young. His future is ahead of him, right? We'll wait to make the arrest. It's best if you make the payment to the victims within 30 minutes. But, as I hesitated, the police officer seemed to lose patience and spoke in a firm tone. Listen, ma'am, you've been only worrying about your son this whole time, but have you even considered the feelings of the victims? I lowered my head in shame. It's your duty as a parent to admit your son's charges and pay the compensation immediately. If you won't, your son's future will be bleak. Is that what you want? As I struggled to find words, something happened. Our pet cat came to the entrance. Leon, don't go outside. Police officers looked around anxiously. Where is Leon? Right here. Ha! Huh. But that's a cat, isn't it? Leon is a cat. I said as I picked up the ginger tabby. Leon meowed. Excuse me. There's no way a cat could commit a it's me scam, right? Upon hearing my words, the police officer sighed. Ma'am, surely you know such a lie wouldn't work, don't you? I'm not lying. I don't have any children. That can't be true, can it? 
Where's the real Leon? The police officers seemed about to enter the house when my husband returned from work. What's going on? Upon hearing from the police about the allegation that Leon was involved in a It's Me scam, my husband was shocked. That's absurd. We don't have any children. My husband stood in front of me and Leon, refuting the accusation. Enough is enough. You two might be colluding together, but it's pointless. The police officer looked irritated. Bringing an arrest warrant for mistaking a human for a cat, aren't you the ones lying? Ha! Huh. We're not lying. Are you really police officers? My husband questioned them with a skeptical look on his face. Yes, we are. If you continue to obstruct the arrest, we will take you to the police station for obstructing official duties. Then, may I see your police ID? Sure. The two officers presented their police badges. Upon seeing them, my husband spoke up. These are forged, aren't they? What are you talking about? They're genuine. The officer quickly tried to put away the police badge, but my husband stopped them. Please show it to me again. My husband stared at the badge intently. This is a replica that you can buy online, right? That's not true. Then, could you tell me the name of your police station, your department, and the phone number of the station? Yes. I'm Detective Johnson from the Detective Division of the Brooklyn Police Station. As for the phone number, I've forgotten it. Do you really forget the phone number of your own workplace? I usually use my cell phone, so I don't bother memorizing the number. Then, we'll look up the number ourselves and call the station to confirm whether you're stationed there. Is that okay with you? No. It would be troublesome if you contacted someone related to the suspect, so please don't use your cell phone. The police officer looked flustered and stopped my husband from using his phone. I see. Then, could you tell me your employee number and rank? Um, it's, uh, 5232, and I'm a lieutenant. Employee numbers should be seven digits, though. As my husband pressed further, the police officer tried to avoid eye contact. Um, it's quite hot today, and I'm feeling a bit lightheaded, so I forgot. As a police officer, you should be able to say it immediately, shouldn't you? You, please tell me your number and rank. My husband asked the other police officer. I recently got promoted, so I don't remember. Employee numbers shouldn't change even if you're transferred or promoted. Isn't that your just misunderstanding? No, your behavior has been too suspicious from the start. You're fake police officers, aren't you? I've been telling you, we're real. That was when my husband and the police officers were arguing back and forth. Oh my, what's going on? Is everything okay? I noticed that our neighbor, who seemed to have just returned, was in the hallway of the apartment. Sorry to bother you. I'll explain later. As I apologized, the neighbor chuckled and said, Ha, huh, even Leon is listening to the police officers, ha. Huh? The police officers were surprised to hear that. Ha. Huh. Is this cat really called Leon? Leon should be their son's name, right? Then, the neighbor responded with a puzzled expression. Son. What are you talking about? They don't have any children. Well, I guess for these two, Leon is like a son though. The two police officers exchanged surprised glances. Isn't that right? Leon? 
As the neighbor stroked his head, Leon closed his eyes and looked happy. After she went back inside her apartment, I said, Are you convinced that Leon couldn't possibly commit fraud? Well. The police officer looked awkward and looked down. Then, after a moment of contemplation, he began to speak. Um, it seems there was a mistake with the arrest warrant earlier. It was meant for someone else. The incident involving that cat is actually related to property damage. What? Do you really expect me to believe that now? It was caught on camera vandalizing items in a convenience store nearby. Leon stays inside our home, so he couldn't possibly do something like that. I was left dumbfounded by the absurd and nonsensical behavior of the fake police officer. Whatever you say, it's already strange enough that you claimed Leon is my son. The police wouldn't make such a mistake, right? Well. You were trying to extort a large sum of money by claiming my son's guilt and urging us to pay compensation to lessen his charges, but your plan failed from the beginning. Compensation? Did we say something like that? Maybe you just misheard us? You seemed quite distressed. You forgot? You definitely mentioned the need for compensation, didn't you? Well, I don't remember saying anything like that. Your acting is futile. I've been recording our conversation with a voice recorder since earlier. What? Are you trying to set us up? I prepared it when I went back inside earlier. I'm sure it recorded the part where you demanded compensation. The police officers suddenly became humble, realizing they were in trouble. I might have said that, but it seems there was a mistake, so I retract it. Sorry for coming by suddenly. So you've given up because you realized you can't fool us anymore? Well, that's not our intention. But there's been some misunderstanding, so we'll head back to the station for now. Just as the fake police officers were about to leave. This is the police. Now, the real police officers I had called earlier arrived. The fake police officers looked visibly flustered. We received a report about suspicious police officers being present. Are you the officers in question? Um, well. At that moment, the other fake police officer sprinted down the hallway of the apartment building, making a quick escape. Wait. But the fake police officer ignored the command and attempted to dash down the stairs. However, on the opposite side, another police officer was waiting and managed to apprehend the fake officer. The other fake police officer standing before me seemed to resign himself to his fate and didn't try to run away. Show me your police ID. Reluctantly, the fake police officer took out their ID. But the real officer quickly noticed that it was a forged police ID. This is a fake, isn't it? Could you come with us to the station? Yes. The fake police officer obediently accompanied the police to the station. The other man in the suit was also subdued and seemed to have given up as he got into the patrol car. Earlier, the fake police officers said they had accomplices outside but it turned out to be a lie. The real police officer said to us, Thank you for reporting. Would it be possible for both of you to come to the station later to give us more details? Yes, of course. A while ago, I pretended to believe the fake police officer and, when I entered the house claiming stomach pain, I reported it to the real police. I also briefly explained the situation to my husband when he returned home. The conversations up to that point were just to buy time until the police arrived. After the police left, I suddenly felt all my strength drain away, and I collapsed right there. Oh, that was so scary. 
Leon had slipped away from my arm and was wandering around the house. You went through a lot. Are you okay? He looked at me with concern. Yeah, because Jack took over and handled things. But still, you knew a lot about police badges and stuff, didn't you? I looked it up desperately on the train back home. It was a bit rushed, but it came in handy. I see. You seemed surprisingly calm and knowledgeable about it all, so I was secretly impressed. I was secretly scared too. I kept thinking, what if they attacked us or had a knife? Anyway, I'm just glad Beth and Leon are safe. He showed a relieved expression. Later, according to what we heard from the police, the fake police officers were arrested for fraud. One of them was also convicted of theft. It turns out he had been used as a shill in the past for its me scams. A shill is someone who withdraws cash from a bank. The police were reportedly releasing surveillance camera images capturing the suspect, seeking information. According to the interrogation, it was revealed that they were the lower rungs of the fraud group that the police had been searching for. They were actually unemployed young men in their 20s. They had been involved in various types of fraud multiple times in the past, and recently, they had been impersonating fake police officers to deceive victims. They targeted this apartment building where relatively many affluent people live in this area, and they had conducted prior research on us. They even pretended to be police officers to gather information by questioning the neighbors. As a result of their inquiries, they somehow became convinced that Leon was my son and targeted me. Typically, lower-level suspects like them are not informed about the ringleader of the fraud group or the group's secrets. However, this arrest led to a domino effect, with members of the fraud group being apprehended one after another, ultimately leading to the arrest of the ringleader. The fraud group had apparently swindled millions of dollars until now. Afterwards, my husband and I received a letter of appreciation from the police. Of course, even Leon, the cat, received a letter of appreciation and one month's supply of cat food for his contribution to solving the case. The news about this incident was featured on television and in newspapers, and on social media, many people praised Leon saying he is cute. It became a big topic of conversation. The daily comics I had been posting on social media caught the attention of many people, and since I also featured Leon in them, they became very popular. The comics were later compiled into a book and became a bestseller. Surprisingly, requests for Leon merchandise also started pouring in. My work as an illustrator has significantly increased and I've been quite busy, but I'm enjoying a fulfilling life with my husband and Leon.